Hi and welcome to a lesson on partial fractions. Before we get into what a partial fraction actually is, let's just first look at something that you should know of, uh, from a previous work. Okay, and that is when we add fractions. We know, hopefully, by now, that when I want to add fractions, I need common denominators. My denominators need to be the same. Okay, now, at the moment, I have um, multiple terms in the denominator, more than one term. Here I see I've got two terms in both denominators. Then I need, I'm going to know I'm going to have to consider them as a unit. And as soon as I've considered them as a unit, I do so by, by making brackets around them. I have to factorize them first. Now these two can't be factorized, and the reason why I factorize is because I want the LCD, the lowest common denominator. Now lowest common denominator is the denominator is a number or a value that consists of every factor that we encounter in the denominator. So you will notice that we have a factor x plus 1 and a factor x plus 2. So in order to add these two together I need both of them to have the same denominator, which means this denominator I'm going to have to multiply with an x plus 2. I can't just do that. If what I do in the denominator, I must do in the numerator as well. So x plus 2 is multiplied in the numerator as well. This one gets multiplied with an x plus 1. Then the numerator as well, multiplied with an x plus 1. Which means in the end, in my numerator, for the first one, I get 2x plus 4. And for the second term, that's a positive, which means all the signs are going to stay the same. That is 1x plus 1. So plus 1x plus 1. And now when all this is simplified, I then get an answer of, what is that? 3x plus 5 over, and when I multiply that out, I get x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, you might say, well, why are you showing me that? I already know that. Well, the reason why I'm showing you that is because I want you to understand that partial fractions is an attempt to go in the opposite direction. Once I'm given this fraction, am I able to write it in terms where my denominator is in its simplest form. Can I write it? Can I separate the terms that was used to add up and give me this answer? And the answer is most definitely, most definitely yes. Unfortunately, the process is not as simple as just doing this backwards. Okay, but some of the steps are. Okay? Some of the steps are. For me to go back to try and get my original two terms, two fractions that was added, okay, I see that I'm definitely going to need the two factors in the denominator. There are two factors in the denominator. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get those two factors. So the first step is factorize denominator. Step one. Factorize your denominator. Okay, let's do it for this one. For this one, we then have, okay, so in my denominator, I have that they are going to go into two brackets, x squared plus 3 plus 2. That positive tells me that two of their brackets are going to be the same. A sign. That plus tells me both of them are going to be positive. Both of them positive. Then the factors of 2 that adds up to give me 3 is 2 times 1. 2 plus 1 gives me 3. So it's 2 and 1. And I'm just going to keep the top the numerator the same. And that is 3x plus 5. Okay, now I know 
that the step just before this was when I had x plus 2 times x plus 1 and another thing that was added x plus 2 times x plus 1 okay and because the denominators were the same the numerators were the numerators were added together okay but we know that this first one we multiplied the numerator with an x plus 1 and in the second one we multiplied the numerator with an x plus 2 so that actually this originally didn't exist those factors didn't exist but in front of them if you can remember in front of them they were numbers in front of those two brackets that actually can cancel out and we don't know what those numbers are and that is the whole process or actually the challenge that we have on our hands okay so step two is to separate the fraction over its factors using unknowns in the numerators. Okay. Now I hope this is not getting you too confused. All I'm saying is that the process from here on onwards is to take that 3x plus 5 and forget about that for a moment. So what we're going to do is just split it up into the possible factors. It could have been an x plus 2 and an x plus 1. Okay. And we do not know what used to be the, expo the, the, the numerators. But what we do know is that when we added these two together, we had to multiply this one with an x plus 1 and that one with an x plus 2 which means the numerator was multiplied with an x plus 1 and that numerator was multiplied with an x plus 2 as well. So that in the top, let's just simplify this and now it, it seems like we're going backwards again. Okay. We put them all and you don't need to go and multiply out the denominator. You can just keep it like that for now. x plus 1. What we do find is that if we multiply in the a a x plus a plus b x plus 2b that's what we get but we know and then all we're going to do is to group the x terms we're going to group the x terms. So in step four, uh, sorry, step three, okay, we're going to add the fractions using the lowest common denominator. That's what we've done. And in step four, We are going to group the like terms and take out the common factors. Let me show you. 
here, here, which terms are alike? That one, AX and BX, we're going to group that, those two. This one doesn't have an X, and that one doesn't have an X, so we're going to group those two. Let's use a different color for that. Those two. Okay, so in the numerator, I now have A, X plus B, X plus A plus 2B over, so I've grouped those two and those two over X plus 1, X plus 2. Again, don't worry about simplifying the denominator. He is not what we're trying to solve. We're trying to find the value A and B. Okay, so continuing with what we're doing now, to find the value A and B, we need to take out the X. So we have A plus B times X plus A plus 2B. There's no common factor, so I took out a common factor. X is a common factor, so I took it out. Over X plus 1, X plus 2. And this is where we notice a curious thing. We see that whatever is in front of X will be what I get when I take A and I add B. The constant number, in other words, the one that doesn't have an X, is when I take A and I add two Bs. So let's just go back. Where does this come from? Okay, This is the numerator. Whatever is in front of X that would be A plus B. And this is A plus 2B. Okay, which means we have the following. We have that A plus B must be equal to 3. But A plus 2B must be equal to 5. Do you see again why? Because in front of the x is an a plus b, and that should equal 3, and the one without the x is the a plus 2b, and that should be 5. So now we're going back here. This is where we notice that this will become a is equal to. So all I'm doing is um, I'm, I want to write a on its own. So I get 3 minus b. Now, the reason why I did so is because now I can replace A with a 3 minus B. So I can say 3 minus B plus 2B is equal to 5. So I get 3 minus B plus 2B gives me plus B is equal to 5. And what must B be? <laughs> what must B be? So that 3 plus B is 5. B should be equal to 2. And what must A then be? Well, remember that A plus B was equal to 3. So A plus 2 should be equal to 3, which means A must be equal to 1. And there we have it. A very long way of showing that if I have 1 over, as you see, A was over which one? A was the one that was over x plus 2. 1 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 1. That is the partial fractions. I've separated it into partial fractions. Let's just go see in the beginning. 1 over a plus 2, or x plus 2, and 2 over x plus 1. Oh, sorry. 2 over x plus 1. But I think let's look at a few more examples and then you should be fine with it. Let's look at another example. 